Well, good evening and Merry Christmas. It's good to see you out this evening, and I pray that this evening helps you have a more Christ-filled Christmas because of your opportunity uh, to be here. I want to begin this evening uh, by saying there is no shame in not knowing something if you've never been shown that something. In this respect, every one of us lives a little bit in the dark. We're all in the dark about many things. I know some people who don't know one end of a holler from another. They couldn't tell you which end was the mouth and which end was the head. But they'd never lived in a holler, so how would they know? In that little piece of life, they're living in the dark. I know people that don't know which side of the tree moss grows on. And you may be one of them saying, who cares? (laughs) I know people who don't know uh, the direction of the prevailing wind. I know folks who don't know where mistletoe grows, but I have my own honey stash. I know when's the best time to uh, find creasy greens and where to dig ginseng. I don't know which mushrooms are poisonous and which ones are delicious until you take them out of your skillet. I know which snakes are venomous. And I know which snakes are good to have around the place. No matter what Roger McLean says, there is a good snake. (laughs) If you don't like rats and mice and other poisonous snakes. If you grew up in the hills, you would probably know all of those things. However, there's a lot of things I didn't know about the city life that you grew up knowing, and I'm still learning. For half my life, I didn't know Newark was in Ohio. I always thought Newark was in New Jersey. And I had no idea the correct pronunciation for the place was Nurk Ahai. <laughs> but after living here for the past 30 years, I'm now without excuse. And they say, you're, Gus, you're supposed to be an enlightened resident of Licking County now. You can't be living in the dark about those things anymore. That's the line that I want us to think about here tonight, the kind of line that was drawn in Bethlehem the night Christ was born, and the night that we read about when the baby Jesus was presented in the temple in Jerusalem. More and more people who lived on this side of the line in the dark, more and more people were becoming enlightened about what God was doing on the other side of the line in the rest of the world. God was giving His Son into the world. Now, in the beginning, very few people understood that, but one by one, Folks began becoming enlightened and stepping to the other side of the line. Joseph and Mary, early adopters. Elizabeth and Zachariah. There were those Christmas shepherds. There was wise men that came somewhere uh, from afar. And in our text read to us, there was this old man named Simeon in the temple at Jerusalem. Just after reading of him, we read of an old woman by the name of Anna as well. And we're all, we're being told that they're all slowly being informed. People who had lived in the dark before are now crossing the line and being enlightened with what God is doing in the world. It's like a light bulb is being turned on, and they are suddenly custodians of a a certain bit of knowledge over here that they really were completely in the dark about over there. 
Now, sometimes knowledge doesn't come to us that way, quickly like that. Sometimes it takes a little, little time for the light to slowly dawn upon us, like a sunrise in the morning. You know, you can flip on your light switch and suddenly have bright light, or you can slowly watch the dawn come over the horizon and brighten up. That was the way the old man Simeon in Jerusalem became enlightened. The old man Simeon was in the temple, and he'd been waiting all his life for what the Bible calls the consolation of Israel, uh, the paraclesis, the, the comforting that God promised would come alongside the nation of Israel someday. The Holy Spirit had been working on this old man and revealing to him for who knows how long in his life that he would not see death until he saw Christ. Until he saw the Lord's anointed one, the comfort that was to come. And it was just at this time, on this occasion, that the Spirit led the old man Simeon into the temple. At the same time, Joseph and Mary brought in the newborn baby to present before the Lord. And then Simeon finally saw what he had been waiting to see all his life. Simeon saw Jesus. Now, for Simeon, it took quite a long time. It was like a sunrise for the light of Christ to dawn upon him. But Simeon finally, given enough, enough time, stepped across the line out of the darkness and into this marvelous light. Whereas the enlightenment came upon Joseph and Mary like lightning. Sometimes knowledge comes to us like that with startling announcements. That's how Joseph and Mary learn about the Christ. Announcements made from the get-go by angels when the couple was least expecting it. Gabriel appears to Mary in the midst of her betrothal. She's not even thinking about these Old Testament prophecies that are so enamored in Simeon's mind. She's thinking about Joseph and the marriage to come when Gabriel startles her and suddenly announces to her and informs her and brings her to the other side of the line. The angel of the Lord appears to Joseph while Joseph is contemplating divorce because Mary's been found with child and he knows it's not his. The angel of the Lord says, No, Joseph. In the dark, Joseph, you don't know. You don't see. You don't understand what is happening. Come over to the other side of the line, and you'll see what is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost, so that what is born shall be called the Son of God. Do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife. And then those shepherds out in the field, the lightning they saw, it scared the you-know-what out of them, the Bible says, keeping watch over their flocks by night when an angel of the Lord comes upon them and the glory of the Lord shines round about them and they're sore afraid, the Bible says. Caught totally unaware. And the angel said unto those shepherds, Fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. And suddenly 
as if that wasn't enough startlement, suddenly there was with that angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. And instantly, suddenly, like a flash, the switch was flipped and those shepherds were transported to the other side of the line and the darkness that had clouded their mind was now gone. And they could see in an instant what it took the old man Simeon a lifetime to learn. So much so that the Bible says of these men, it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven. The shepherds said to one another, let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass. There was no doubt in their mind. The clouds in their mind were gone. The darkness was past. They'd been enlightened. Let's go see. Let's see. Let's see this thing the Lord hath made known to us. And they came with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now, Simeon would discover the same thing. It would just take him more time. Simeon will be shown not at the manger scene, but Simeon will be shown when the Christ child is brought into the temple to be presented. And he'll take that babe in his arms, the Bible says, and he'll bless God. And he'll say, Lord, now you're letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. I can go in peace, God. You said I'd live to see the appearance of of the Christ. And now my eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light of revelation for the Gentiles so that all will be able to see, and a light for the glory of your people, Israel. Wish I could say more about that verse. I'm so filled from the study of it. But you do realize that had Jesus not come, we would not know any of these Old Testament prophecies. We would not be reading that Old Testament at all. This would all be foreign. The whole idea that God had made grand promises to send His Son into the world to be the Savior of the world would be the last thought on our mind. Had the light not dawned, and Jesus not come. And when he comes, the prophet said, it will be for the glory of Israel. It will just be a few days, just a few days, until there'll be wise men coming from afar to Jerusalem saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews? We've got gifts for the newborn king, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Foreign kings drawn to Jerusalem and inevitably Bethlehem. And you do understand that even this very night, there are pilgrims from all over the world gathering in Bethlehem again, bringing the glory to Israel from whom was born God's king. It's amazing. It's amazing. I've often wondered how Mary felt about handing her baby boy over to this strange man, Simeon, who was hanging around the temple through his last days. Ladies, if you had a newborn baby, would you surrender that baby to a strange man? Some wonder if Simeon might have been one of the temple priests. We don't know. The Bible doesn't say, but it may explain why Mary would surrender her baby to a stranger like that. Maybe he was a priest. We know what the Bible says. The Bible says he was a righteous and a devout man, and the Holy Spirit had been working on this man for a long, long time. 
But when he finally sees this infant Jesus born just a few miles south in Bethlehem and sees that little babe brought into Jerusalem, Simeon crosses the line and joins Joseph and Mary and those shepherds and the wise men. He steps across out of darkness and into God's wonderful light. And then he takes as many as he can with him so that they can see the light with him. He raises that little man and he says, Christ, the Savior, is born. The one he'd waited to see all his life. And the Bible says his father and his mother marveled at what was said about him. Folks, that's what we're doing tonight. We're raising Christ high, as high as we can. We're letting Christ shine, shine as bright as he can. For both old-timers that have taken a long time stepping across the line out of darkness and finally acknowledging this wonderful light, and for new-timers that are just, just now taking their first steps across the line. We're trying to show Christ so that he can be marveled at by those who see him. When people see him, for themselves, when people consider joining us crossing the line, when people consider leaving the darkness for the light, when people who before weren't sure they could really know, wasn't certain these things had really happened, didn't know perhaps what this night was all about, now they cross the line to absolutely knowing, absolutely trusting, absolutely marveling with Joseph and Mary and with so many others in the Christmas story so that we can all join together in praising God for what He has done. And I have to applaud all the moms and dads here, all the grandmas and grandpas here tonight to to bring your kids and grandkids to this kind of a service. Kids are such a big part of Christmas. I was talking with some folks before the service about that. I, I enjoy my grandkids so much, I, I really wish we could have had them first. <laughs> but we, we love, we love kids at Christmas time, don't we? I know kids love Christmas time, but we love kids at Christmas time. Great big bundles of joy and excitement and anticipation. They got eager, bright eyes all bugged out. They're taking all this in that we're seeing tonight. They're wondering about all the excitement waiting on them tomorrow morning. What what would it be like? I can't even imagine anymore. But I'm thankful that part of what you parents and grandparents wanted for your little ones was to experience this Christmas. You wanted them to also experience this. Of all the things you wanted your children to experience this Christmas, you also wanted them to experience Christ. And in song and in prayer and Scripture, in the darkness and the light portrayed in this room, in the manger scenes, we do all this in hopes that one day The day will come when our little one will understand and with us step across the line from the darkness into the light. And that they would truly understand what this night is all about. Two years ago, we had a young lady confess Christ on this very night. And she was baptized into Christ on Christmas Eve, 2017. How cool is that? Let me tell you one cooler. Three years ago, we had an older gentleman baptized into Christ on Christmas morning. You tell me a better Christmas present than that. 
Both of them received the best Christmas present of their life. And there is just no reason that someone here couldn't, with them, step across the line and receive the same gift of enlightenment to leave the darkness for the light. I hope someone will stop out at the beginning point on your way out because there'll be people out there that'll tell you how you can do that even tonight, how you can join those who understand what it was that Christ was born to do. How old Simeon went on to say to Mary, the mother of this little infant, behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel and for a sign that is opposed. And Mary, the old man says, a sword will pierce your soul also. This is the image that we showed Sunday morning of what Simeon was talking about. This is what we gather to remember this evening. Not just Christ's coming, but the reason for Christ's coming as well. Christ came to take upon Himself our sin so that we could receive the greatest gift ever given, our forgiveness. Amen? That's why Christ came. I'm going to pray that the Lord will help us remember how much that cost Him. Let's pray, could we please? Lord God, we thank You so much for Your Son, Jesus, and for Your Word that You kept in sending Him into this world. Many waited long on Him, and some were found faithfully waiting, even when He came. But your son Jesus, whether received or not, did take upon himself the wrong that we have done and suffered in our place, paying any price that we would owe so that we could be forgiven. And we remember now that sacrifice in the way Christ asked for it to be remembered. And by it, we ask, Lord, that you remind us just how high of a price he paid. It's in Jesus' name we pray. God's people say it.